Hello everyone, and welcome to this new tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Media Composer for high-res workflows. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this first lesson, we're going to discuss some basic concepts of Media Composer, with the focus really being on larger than HD projects. Let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And as you can see, we are greeted by the project selection window. Now this window works a little bit differently than you might be accustomed to if you're just making a transition to Media Composer from an application like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10. The project window is basically just that. It's a place that you can come in and not only select a project that you want to work on, but you can also set up a project to work on right from scratch. Now, one thing that I always tell people, and this is something that's very important to keep in mind when you're working with Media Composer, when you're setting up your project, you're really not setting up your project for the type of media that you're going to be working with. Because in reality, you can work with any type of media inside of any type of project in Avid Media Composer. The project window is really your place to set your project up for how you're going to want to finish your project. If you know that, let's just say for argument's sake, you're going to be finishing your project as a 2K scope project at 2398 frames per second, and you're going to be exporting that file for the digital cinema, you're going to want to make sure that you set your project up for that type of project now so that you don't run into the problem of attempting to convert a project from one type to another when you're done your edit. Okay, so let's talk about creating a new project. Now, inside the project selection window, the first thing that you're going to notice is a little bit different if you're new to Media Composer or if you haven't updated in a while, is that when you select a project over here on the right hand side below the new project button that we're going to get to in just a second, is we now have a description of exactly what is going on with any project that we might select. This is very handy now in case you need to know things like what is the project type or the color space or even the raster dimensions of your project. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new project. Now I'm not going to create the actual project because I already have a project set up for what we're going to be working on, but I just want to click on the new project window to call up the new project window. Now again, this is where we're really going to tailor the project exactly the way that we might want to work. Now obviously the project name is whatever you might want to name the project. Now the format is exceptionally important. You're going to notice that if I drop down the format, again if you're new to Media Composer or making the return, we now have a lot more options that we had before, specifically the larger than HD project sizes that you'll notice if we come down we have access to Ultra HD, 2K, and 4K. And what is also very cool, you'll notice if I come back up to Ultra HD just as an example, you'll see that we have access to some high frame rate projects including 50p, 5994p and 60p and depending on the project that you're working on if I actually come to a 4k project right here you're going to notice if I come into the scope project we also have access to 49952 progressive and 48 progressive just like how the new Lord of the Rings the Hobbit movies were shot in 48 frames per second. Now again, something that's exceptionally important to keep in mind is that if you're working on a project specifically for the digital cinema you're going to want to make sure that you select one of the DCI specific projects here and either scope, full, or flat based on the aspect ratio of the frame that you're going to be working in. Now, a new feature that's been added into Media Composer just recently is the ability to create a custom project as well. To do that is very simple. All you need to do is simply navigate right down here to the bottom to custom once you select it, you can simply enter the raster dimension of whatever project you might want to be working on. Now one thing I get asked all the time is, Kev, why would I ever want to create a custom project? I'm never going to need that. Well, believe it or not, I actually use the custom project setup all the time. For what, you might ask? Well, I create a lot of projects for Instagram. Instagram is a square format. In this case, I'm using 500 by 500 as an example, but in a lot of cases, I'm working in 1080 by 1080, 800 by 800, doesn't really matter. But this is a way that I can get in and very easily create a project specifically for a format like Instagram. This way, I don't have to find myself after the fact exporting, going into a third party utility to get in, crop my video, do I have to make sure everything's centered? I don't have to worry about anything. I can worry about all of that right here from within Media Composer. And the best part is, is that once I created a preset like the one that I had right here, is I can simply come down 
and click Save Preset, and the preset will be added to my format dropdown. Very, very handy. Now, of course, I also have the ability to get in and adjust the color space if I wanted to, as well as the frame rate, and even if I happen to be working in a stereoscopic project. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, like I said, I've already created a project. So what I'm going to do is simply cancel out of the new project window. I'm going to select the Avid Blogs project that I have right here that I already have set up as a 4K DCI scope project. And I'm simply going to say OK. Now that my project has loaded, I do want to point out something that I think is exceptionally important for you to keep in mind. Now, you'll remember that I said that I'd created a 4K DCI scope project to work with for our tutorial series. What I do want to mention is the fact that you are absolutely not limited to working in this format if you don't want to. The only thing that's locked in when you create a project is the frame rate of that project. Now, I can't get in and change that, but that doesn't mean that I can't get in and change the raster dimensions of this project. So let's say, for example, you know, I'd worked on a 4K project and now I decided that inside the same project I wanted to do a very short HD edit. Well, I have the ability to link to media, any type of media that I might want to link to. I can simply navigate over here to the Format tab, I can come to the Presets dropdown, and I can easily switch this project to any type of HD or even SD project that I might need to work in. But as you'll see, the only option that I have as far as frame rate goes is that 23976 frames per second. Now again, you'll remember, like I mentioned, when we were talking about the project type, that doesn't mean that I can't bring in 2997, 60 frame, 48 frame per second footage and work with it in this project. It just means that the project is locked to that frame rate type. So in the end, when I'm done and I go to export this project to send it off to a client or maybe I'm sending it to the web or wherever I'm sending it to, that frame rate will be locked in because I know that that's the frame rate that I need to deliver to the client. What I want to just talk about very briefly right now, because we're going to talk more about this in a later lesson when we actually talk specifically about transcoding, is the new media type inside of larger than HD projects. Editors who are accustomed to working in Media Composer are very familiar with DNX HD, which is the Avid media type or the Avid codec that you're going to be using when you work in HD projects, not SD, HD projects. For working in larger than HD projects, we actually have a new codec. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose one of these clips here that I've linked to, and I'm going to right click. I'm just going to say consolidate transcode. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that you don't need to write any of this down or try to remember this because we're, like I said, we're going to talk more about this in depth in an upcoming lesson. What I want to do is just show you that when I switch over to transcode, now the options for resolution that we have. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I am on a Mac, so this is going to vary slightly based on the type of system you're on, I have the ability to get in, and if I was on Windows, to transcode these files to DNX HR low bandwidth, standard quality, high quality, or high quality 10-bit. Because I'm on the Mac, I have the additional option of working in ProRes 422 Proxy, 422 LT, 422, and 422 HQ. Obviously, working on the Mac has a few extra benefits, but at the end of the day, working with the new DNX HR codec in any one of these resolutions. Now, obviously, the resolution will be chosen based on the power of your system. If you're actually running on a lower end system, you still want to work in, you know, Ultra HD 2K or 4K. Maybe you want to work in DNX HR low bandwidth. If you're like me, you're working on a, you know, a system that has a Thunderbolt 2 connection to a 24 terabyte, you know, RAID hard drive. Maybe you're going to want to bump it up to HQ or even HQ 10-bit. Again, like I said, your mileage will vary based on the power of your system. Now, again, we're going to talk more about this in an upcoming lesson, but I do want to show you a few little cool features that are new to Media Composer and a couple of the recent updates that you're really going to like. Media Composer is not only the best editing application on the market today, it's also the editing application that's going to keep you organized and help you find your footage lightning quick. And these new updates are really going to pound that fact home. Now let me give you an example. 
Now you'll remember I said just a minute or so ago that I'd name my bins blue, green, red, and yellow. But what I want you to do is just assume for argument's sake that this project actually has 100 bins and I have bins called, you know, blue one, blue two, blue three, and I've got red one, two, three, red, you know, one through 10, you know, yellow one through 10. And I really wanna get in and find a very specific bin or bins in my project. Well, you're gonna notice up here at the top of the project window, we now have a new dialog box that we can get in and enter search information into. So for example, if I needed to find all of the bins that have the word red in them, all I need to do is simply type red into the search window and you'll see Media Composer quickly sifts through all the bins in the projects to only show me those bins that have the word red in them. This is a very handy way to get in and find bins lightning quick so that Media is only ever a mouse click away. Okay, now let's open one of these bins here. We'll open the yellow bin because that happens to be where all my footage is at. Now take a look down at the bottom of the bin. You're gonna notice another search dialog box that I can simply come down to and if I'm looking for all the footage that I've actually named as City, I can simply type in City and Media Composer is quickly going to sift through that bin and only show me the clips that have the word City in the name. Again, a very handy way to find your footage lightning fast. But let's just say for argument's sake, you have one of those clients that's come in and they've had you put a clip into a timeline and maybe you did this weeks ago and they know what the name of that clip is and they just really need you to find it in the timeline really quickly. Well, you know what? No problem. Let me just call my sequence up here that has some of the footage in here from my bin. And let's just say for argument's sake, I'm looking for a clip that has the word bridge in it. Now I know it's right here, but let's just say my sequence is two hours long and I need to find that clip lightning quick. No problem. I can come down to the search dialog box here at the bottom of the timeline, simply type in bridge and guess what? Media Composer is going to find that clip lightning quick. But let's say hypothetically, we had a bunch of clips in here that had the same word in it. Now in this case, I'm not gonna use bridge, I'm gonna use city. I'm simply gonna type city in, and you're gonna see that Media Composer is gonna jump down to the next clip that has the word city in it. But I wanna know if there's any clips before this that have the word city in it, no problem. All I need to do is simply come down here and jump back to find to the left of the time bar any clips that have the word city in it, and there we go. Of course, I can jump down to the edit that I was just at with the word city in it or the clip that has city in it. And I can click it again to see if there's another clip. And you'll see we just jump right back to the beginning here. But this is a very handy way to get in and find clips in your timeline lightning quick. So you can see finding bins, finding clips, or finding clips in your timeline is literally just a matter of typing in what you want to find, clicking search, and you can find all that media lightning fast. Okay, so that wraps up lesson one of our look at high-res workflows. In lesson two, we're gonna focus on the core concept of transcoding and consolidating and everything that you as the editor or as the assistant editor will need to know, including source settings, to make sure that your media appears properly and in the right codec or resolution in the project that you're working on.